Um, okay, so as a future teacher in my social studies methods classes, we have learned about the lack of social studies instruction just in schools in general. And um, I think that that really leads to like the lack of accountability. Um, not just there's phones and we're distracted, but we're not in inspired in that general way. But anyway, posing questions that are social justice issues to our students is what we are being trained to do and to teach students how to question the ways that things are done and to become agents of change rather than just talk about an issue, okay, here's a problem, but how can we, how can we propose a solution to it? So my question for you is, what do you propose that we do about this power that you've been speaking about and how do we make a change? Do you think that there is a solution? Yes, yeah, so that's a very good question and I think I would interpret the question to mean that politics is in fact about power. If you think about what wealth is, wealth is actually stored power, right? Wealth is the ability to exercise power. And, um, and, and the university is not about power, the university is about ideas. And so the, the beauty of a university is that we can take these two things that are not normally related which is wealth and power on the one hand, which is the currency of the larger society, and then look at the currency of the university, which is discussion, debate, ideas, and bring the two together. And this is a perfectly good laboratory to do that. Now, in order to do that, though, there are two, two things that we have to keep in mind that, in my view, don't go on, typically, in universities. Number one, I'm a great believer in social justice, but the problem is that social justice can be is something to be argued about. It's not self-evident. It's not self-evident how the rewards of a market should be allocated. It's not self-evident what's fair. In politics, for example, I've heard now a hundred times Obama say, you have to pay your fair share. My question to him is, what is that fair share? In other words, if he's a liberal, it's always reasonable to ask a liberal who wants change in what society, liberal, would you be a conservative? In other words, you want taxes to be higher. Okay, how much higher? At what point do you stop? At what point are you going to stop putting your hand into my pocket in the name of social justice? You're taking 50%. Will you be content at 60? Will I, can I be con confident that uh, if I give you 60, I'll never hear from you again? Or will you then decide that you want 70? Why can't you tell me what's fair in advance before you take it? In other words, so we're having this debate about justice, but no one is saying what's just, right? I mean, so we begin with Socrates. Socrates starts and he says, what is justice? Define it. Don't talk about it like an idiot. Define it first. Second, tell me at what level you think the pie should be cut. Mm -hmm. Then we can discuss your idea of justice. But if your idea of justice is simply translates to give me more, that's not justice. What kind of justice is that? So I agree. Uh, education to me is about stimulating a sense of wonder. Uh, it's about taking things that seem obvious and making them into questions. Um, our politics would be really exciting if young people were to be part of it, raising fundamental questions that politicians don't ask. You know, so for example, let's say for example, we, be we believe in democracy. Never hear a word more often uttered than democracy. Majority rules. Okay, the first question I have is, does the majority get to rule on everything? Let's say the majority decides that next week you should be shot. Is that, is that a good thing? Because we all decide, we had a vote. We just decided we'd like to kill you. Why not? Because majority rule is limited by your rights, right? Now let's take a more difficult question. Let's say the majority decides to, to find one man, Bill Gates, and take all his money. Does the majority have the right to do that? Does the majority have the right to have a vote? and say, Bill Gates has $51 billion. That's way too much. Let's leave him with $1 billion and take 50. Do we have the right to do that in the name of democracy? And if not, why not? Where does it say in the Constitution that we can't do that? So to me, these are like fundamental types of questions, right? Mm -hmm. It would be really good to have these debated on campuses like this one. What are the limits of majority rule? Where does majority rule stop? 
the majority has power, but the power, the founders believe the majority has power within specified domains. They have no power outside those domains. What are those domains? So anyway, to me, that's what college is all about. And when these debates don't occur, I think then you as students, as young people, are being cheated. And so what I try to do in opportunities like this one is to just raise these types of questions mm -hmm. uh, to hope that some of it plants a seed for the future.